Boxing King Media in association with Box Row. Delighted to be joined by Sam Jones at your humble abode. Uh, thank you for welcoming me to your home today. Yeah, nice to have you, mate. First time, I think second time we've met. Second time we've met. I think the first time we met, we did. I think you probably didn't know who I was, but. You but, probably didn't know I barely was. No, I think mm. I, I did, I did. But we've got the introduction done today, so it's uh, great to finally meet you face to face. Um, I'm trying to think where to start. Obviously, you're a dad, you, your kid's nine months in now. Nearly nine months, yeah. How are you finding juggling family life, probellum? Like, you guys are making so many moves in boxing. And you've got a nine-month-old. Um, do you know what, mate? It's, um, it came at, like, a good time because when I was with, working with S-Jam, I was everywhere. Like, I was, it's constant. Like, it really was constant. And because Pro Bellum are a new company, they're, they're making hundreds of moves, but they've got a, a fantastic team. They've got um, so, so many people working, working with it. It's a huge, it's a huge team. So it's kind of, at the moment, for me, it's kind of, it's, it's, a, it's a slow burner. But what's coming up is going to be absolutely massive with, with Pro Bellum. So, like, I'm basically, I'm spending as much time as I can with my little baby as as um, as possible to be honest with you because this I'm gonna be it's gonna be relentless very very soon. Talking of that, we can already see that the the fighters that you guys are signing left yeah. right and center the shows that are getting announced Dubai. Talk to me about Dubai. Why Dubai? It's just like if if you've uh, have you, you've been a lot of times. Yeah, you've been. So you can see it's got every ingredient to be the new mecca of boxing it really has it's got everything the facilities are unbelievable when we went to um the coca-cola arena it's literally like it's, it's built for boxing it's it was absolutely it's stunning a, a stunning arena the facilities are unbelievable it's just got absolutely everything so long may that continue there's going to be plenty of shows coming to dubai so the show that you guys have got announced it'll be a double header 18th two, yeah. 19th of march so talk to me about that first of all why is it split over two days and I think there's um there's just a lot there's, they, they want to put on like a, a big like whole week 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 of boxing like there's going to be press conferences two fight nights Estelle Mosley I think it's going to be the first woman to ever I don't know whether to whether it's boxing there I'm, I'm not 100% certain but definitely the first ever world title fight between two um two ladies having a, having a fight Estelle Mosley Olympic gold medalist then you've got Sonny Edwards coming back to headline against uh, Mohamed Wasim in a in a really really good fight you've got Regis Progre against Tyrone McKenna Huge, huge, huge week of boxing. And with regards to Sonny, because um, yeah. I'm, I'm a massive fan of Sonny Edwards. Yeah. Great fighter. And how, how much of a steal was it for Provellum to get him signed? Obviously, he left Frank recently and yeah. he's ultimately a free agent. Yeah. And you'd think, on face value, Matchroom, he'd, he'd appeal to Matchroom because he talks, he can fight, and Matchroom yeah. would probably get access to all, all the flyweights. Yeah, I think what Provellum are, are trying to do, it's like no matter what, Companies with companies, they want to make all the best fights. So Sonny's not going to struggle to make 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 big fights. And as I said, they've kept him active. He's he's he's. Uh, this will be the second pro Bellum show. He's headline, and yeah, they've managed to put pen to paper. And Sonny's a brilliant fighter. I've always been a, a big fan of Sonny's uh, boxing style because I mean, a lot of people say, oh yeah, he kind of just gets on his bike. But if you watch his last fight, he got caught. It was a really bad cut. I was with him. In, I was with him afterwards, and I kind of saw the stitches going in. It was a real big gash on his head. And he had to deal with like a bit of adversity in that fight with the with the court, and he and he stood and traded as well. He, he showed that he's got he's got dog in him as well, and uh, you have to be kind of up close to appreciate how good he actually is in the ring. And I think he's the best flyweight in the world. I even think he's the best super flyweight in the world as well. If he was to go up, I think he's a, just he's an excellent fighter, Sonny. And obviously he talks. I mean, he's never short of an argument on Twitter, is he? Nobody wants to get on the wrong side of Sonny on Twitter because y y y it's not going to be a nice place for you. <laughs> And, and him now signing a, a promotional deal with Probellum, mm. is it still going to be easy for him to to get that potential Martinez fight? A hundred percent. You know, it, it, as I say, I think Sonny wanted this fight this time. Martinez has gone on to fight Chocolatito. Be brilliant. If Sonny, Sonny's got a hard fight against um, against Wasim, but if he was to come through that fight, then how about the winner of that fight? Unbelievable. And we're, uh, on that subject of that particular show, what's the stage with like TV deals, etc.? What, what, what channel? It'll be announced in due course. Mm -hmm. It'll be announced in due course, but there's uh, there's something big coming. Okay, that's that's intriguing. So you're the face of obviously Probellum in the UK. I wouldn't necessarily say I was the face of it, mate. I would just say that 
my role is is developing. My role is developing. Um, I'm I'm down as talent relations, but it's gonna it's gonna progress. Maybe that's what they'll want. That what sort they want me to do. It's like it's playing to my strengths. I know I can promote, and I know I'll be a fantastic promoter. Um, it was always like the elephant in the room when I was a manager to say, "Oh, Sam, when are you going to be a promoter?" So yeah, maybe that is the path I'm going to go down. Richard Schaefer is the president of the company. If that's what I'm needed to do, then I'm I'm I'm, I'm all for it. But I'm I'm very very fortunate to be a part of such a huge project. I mean, people can say whatever they like, but within five months, look at the talent they've they've acquired. It's unheard of. All those those partnerships. It's incredible the pace that they're going to be moving. Can you imagine imagine in a year's time? Well, that, that's the point I wanted to get to because it, it's crazy. Like you said, the names that you, you've acquired within within months mm -hmm. um, and obviously the, the, the social media pages, the infrastructure, it seems like you've got everything done really quickly. So yeah. the man behind it, is Richard Schaefer the main man at Probellum then? No, there's, there's, there's Richard Schaefer, there's Harrison Whitman. There's um, there's a number of there's a m number of different people. There's there's Anthony Potosa, who was a very talented guy who worked with the UFC. There's a huge amount of people, and there's myself as well. So it's uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a powerhouse pro bellum. It really is. And talking of the fighters that you sign, I was, was going to say players. The fighters that you're signing, McCormack brothers recently, uh, a massive coup. Um, it seems to be a, a pattern emerging. Uh, obviously, matchroom you'd expect to be signing for yeah. the Olympian as Olympians as they normally do, but obviously they missed out on Fraser Clark. Now the McCormack brothers. Is this a pattern they're going to see more often now that they moved on to the zone? Uh, I don't know because listen, Eddie's still Eddie's a very very good promoter, but um, I don't know whether it's to do with the fact the zone being an app. I don't know, but Eddie's still a. a a brilliant promoter. Do you know what I mean? He's one of the world, one of the world's best, arguably the best. Um, but yeah, look, it's just how the how the cookie crumbles. I mean, Pro Bellum have signed. I think they've got the uh, Peter McGrail, the McCormacks. He's, he's, do you know what I mean? They're doing they're doing big things. And I think and have Sky have acquired uh, Fraser Clark. But I think uh, Eddie's got Siobhan and he's got Galal as well. Galal being an amazing fighter, the Olympic gold medalist. So yes, yeah, it's, it's and there's. I think it's a great time for boxers at the moment because they're spoiled for choice managerially and promotionally. They're fighting for signatures. So it's a great time to be a boxer at the moment because you're spoiled for choice and, you've, and, you can, and they're, they're driving high prices, commanding high prices. They sure are. And the ambition for uh, Probellum, is it ultimately to be at the same level as Matchroom where you've got all the top stars and you've got to have your own TV platform at some yeah, point? Yeah, yeah. I'll ask you that question though. Do you know from what you've seen so far as like a boxing fan? Yeah. It's it's crazy how fast it's, they're how fa it's ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. Way, yeah. So you've answered your own question there. Yeah. They're gonna be enormous. They're gonna be absolutely enormous. I wouldn't have left the position I was in to if if something wasn't gonna be gonna be huge. And this is gonna be huge. What was what made you so confident that this would be big because in the past like you know we've had it before when Frank Warren uh, Ricky Hatton and I think it was um, Frank Maloney at the time and they all got together and t to set up a new Sky Sports promotional team mm -hmm. but it never really took off but this has why has this been able to the take people off? behind it there's so many talented people involved like I'm a small fish if I'm honest with you in this in the in this pond but to be a fish in this pond, I'm grateful for because there's there's again Harrison Whitman who I've worked with before. He was uh, he was at top rank, did great things there. Richard Schaefer, I've got a history of Richard Schaefer. I've worked with Richard for I worked with Richard for years with Joe Joyce, so I know him very well. And there's just a whole like unbelievable list of list of people that that work there. And on the big moves Probellum are making, um, was there any interest at all to bid for the Feely White fight? Seen as how big, you know. Probellum. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. It's like Tyson's with top rank and Frank and Dillian's with well, he's he's not signed with Matchroom, but he's 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 with Eddie. So it didn't really make probably much much sense to do that. Uh, and then just on, you know, you mentioned S Jam and the work you did there. Yeah. Um, Florian Marku, uh, obviously recently, uh, I believe he's left training in Derby recently. Yeah, as yeah. Well. Uh, do you know Do you know why why, why he left or, or No, I think Florian is. As, I don't. I don't know. Fro, Fro, Florian's at Florian's his own man, and um, I always said to Florian that Grant Smith would be a good a good coach for him because I really respect Grant. I think he's one of the best coaches in the country. I'm not just saying that, I, and I, I really respect him, Grant. He's not like a, 
he's kind of quiet, isn't he, Grant? He's kind of like, not, not quiet as it like it, but he's not like, he's not in front of the camera all the time. He's like, he just gets on with his work and look what he's produced. He's got Dalton Smith, who's probably one of the best prospects in this country. He's got Sonny Edwards, arguably the most talented uh, fighter, fighter from the UK, arguably. Um, he made Charlie Edwards a world champion. Um, uh, I'm sure. I think, I'm not sure who else he's, he's. John Doherty. I know he's going to bring him back, but like he's doing. He's, he's a he's a really great trainer, Grant. And I think that because he's not so out there and doesn't talk, he doesn't get spoken about as much as the other trainers per se. But like, I I really really hold him in high regard. I think he's an absolutely brilliant trainer. I think he's a really good man as well. Sweet and. With regards to uh, you know Florian going to Sky and uh, yeah. Johnny Fisher recently extending his uh, matchroom deal, yes, how much of a part is the amount of tickets that them sell playing that? Because that surely, because if they're selling X amount of tickets, yeah, yeah. they're obviously going to be wanting a bigger cut of what they're selling. No, of course. Like, listen, I've always said both of those two are a promoter's dream, uh, Florian, because Florian sells a shitload of tickets, but he, he also talks talks the good game. And, and, and he can fight for fun as well. Johnny Fisher can fight for fun. He knocks people out. He's the nicest man. I'm not just saying it's the nicest uh, man you'll ever meet. We're very, very, we're very, very close to Johnny. Still, still even now um, to Johnny. Um, and he's a promoter. He says, I think he sold two and a half thousand tickets for the Ali Pali tomorrow. It is, unheard, money, it is unheard of though. It's unheard of. So that's what, when I, when I, when I first signed Johnny, because I, I signed Johnny, like literally I did, uh, obviously I was working with Adam, but I signed him. Um, I saw some raw potential in Johnny when he came to spar Joe Joyce in Adam Booth's gym. He tried to beat Joe up, like he literally tried to beat Joe up. And I was like, whoa, because some people just step in the ring and they, they feel quite intimidated sometimes because it's like Joe was a big kind of big name. Well, he is a big name to, to someone like Johnny. And Johnny didn't have any fear whatsoever. He got in the ring and he tried to stick it on Joe and he did well. Like, it was raw, but he stuck it on him and did well. And then we flew him out to Vegas. And then our, our relationship kind of developed from there. And I rang Eddie and said, look, Eddie, we've got... Because there was no talks of Johnny turning pro. He was going to probably turn out... He was actually applying to Adam's company to, to work as, a, as like, in, in his law firm in, in, in London. Because Johnny's an intelligent guy. But um, we saw something in him. And I rang Eddie. And Eddie kind of just went flipping it. Because I was giving him that he was thinking, oh, he's just sales pitching me the old sales pitch and I was thinking no Eddie listen he's from Romford he's going to sell a shitload of tickets and I remember telling Eddie for his for the first fight back obviously because of the Covid it never really happened Johnny this guy will sell over a thousand tickets and Eddie said to me in these words he goes if he sells 300 tickets it will be a fucking miracle those were his words and I said and he goes to me there's no way on earth he will sell a thousand tickets and I went Eddie he will sell a thousand tickets he went on to sell I think 1200,000 1200,000 it's 1200 tickets at the O2 uh, when the first fight with his crowds come back and uh, and look what he's look what he's gone on to do at um at the Ali Pali, which is two and a half thousand tickets. And he does it's unheard a of. Mathematician to work out that's like potentially over a hundred thousand pounds. That's a lot of money. Yeah, oh, it's a it's a, it's a huge it's a huge amount. But listen, it's gonna change Johnny's life. And that's what I'm like people ask me all the time what I'm most proud of in boxing. The night when Joe beat Daniel Dubois was probably one of the best nights of my life because people were so against him and I was so certain Joe was going to win that fight. I've lived with him I didn't miss a spa and I knew that Joe was going to beat him. I knew he was going to stop him as well. I knew it was going to, I didn't obviously know how it was going to end, but we knew he was going to win like that. But what I've done for Johnny Fisher, I, I do take a lot of credit for. I do take a lot of, of, of credit for because, and it's it's my big, one of my, it's, it is the, my biggest achievement in boxing, watching Johnny Fisher it makes me like genuinely really, really proud because he's a good guy, comes from a really, he's got such a great family and it makes me smile. I'll sit here tomorrow and I'll watch him and it'll make me smile because he deserves every bit of it. Good things happen to good people. And you sold him and obviously he's, he's now, but he's proved Eddie and wrong. Have you, have you guys had that conversation with each other since? I don't need to. I don't need to because I think Eddie respects me and I respect, respect Eddie and I'm like, I'm, I'm, it's right that Johnny's with Eddie and he's continuing his journey with them. Eddie's kind of the Essex kind of thing going on. He's got a huge good and and listen, I'll always, always support Johnny no matter what. There's no fight, nothing financial in it for me anymore. Um, but I will always be I'll be always be there for him. If he ever needs anything from me, he knows he's got it. Okay. Uh, Sam, there's obviously certain people in boxing and all this is like reality TV. 
that's what I call it. That's why people yeah. love watching IFL, Boxing Social. It's a bit of a soap opera. It is, isn't it? And I'm hoping Boxing King Media are going to be joining that bandwagon. Um, people like listening to you, and I want to get your opinion. Do on they? It. I'd like to think, if you look at the views Do and they? the comments pe- pe- people say, um, what's your views on the whole Chris Eubank Jr., Conor Ben thing, that's, you know, the fallout from that? Do you think it's genuine what Conor Ben's saying? Or? Smoke and mirrors me. I mean, listen, every time I get interviewed about Conor Ben, I'm just, I'm just, I just give my truthful opinion. I swear to you this. I would say because I've said it to while, while I've stood next to Connor. I really like Connor Ben. I respect him. He doesn't have to box. He's a good-looking kid. He can do whatever he do whatever he likes. His, his family he comes from a from a from a, a family that doesn't need. Do you know what I mean? Good money in his family. His dad created an amazing legacy. One of the best British fighters of all time. One of the most exciting British fighters of all time for sure. Um, but it it's like. Connor won't fight Echo Esserman because Echo Esserman's domestic level, even though I think that's a 50 50 fight with someone like Echo Esserman against Connor Ben. He won't fight Florian because apparently he's above Florian. He won't fight David Avanesian because he's above a European level. He won't fight Jaron Ennis because it's not the right time, but he wants to fight Ugas. Ugas is a world champion. And I just think just be straight with people or where you are with your career. Like, not just necessarily him. It's like. Eddie is, it may be Eddie as well, just kind of say, oh, Avanessian's not well-known enough, but you want to fight Maurice Hooker. Avanessian's more well-known than Maurice Hooker. Fact. Especially in this country, especially after the win against Josh Kelly. That really propelled Avanessian's um, profile. Because I think it was the most viewed Sky Sports during the lockdown. That was the most, got the most views. So I'm just like, there's no shame in saying, Avanessian punches like a horse. Not yet, do you know what I mean? Not yet, I, I, I'm not quite ready for that. But don't like try and tell them, oh no, he, he, he's not well known. Just say you don't want the fight. It's no problem. People would probably have a bit more respect if you kind of said that. So I don't really get it. And then he's like, I want to fight Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner is eating Big Macs in, in, in a hotel with his, with his, with his wife somewhere in, in Ohio. And um, you've got, I want to fight Sean Porter. Sean Porter's retired. But, do you know what I mean? But, but there's, there's fighters at the moment that like there's, there's, there's talk of him fighting that like Van Heerden. It's just underwhelming to me. Like, like it's, it's underwhelming to me because if you look at his list of opponents like Algeria, and it sounds like I'm, I'm tearing in, but it's just, a, it's just the truth. Algeria's 38 years old. Florian Marker would knock him out. Echo Esman would knock him out. Avanissian would have snapped him in five different pieces. Do you, do you understand what I mean? And the, the opponent before that, Formella, was like a re, like a world class journeyman. I know he came off a win, a, a, a loss against twelve points, a points decision loss against Sean Porter, but he didn't throw a punch. He was just really good, like evading, like shots. He was just kind of on his bike. But if you look at those those opponents, and and he's not really fought anybody with any kind of punching record that, that can that can punch. And I just think that how he's been match made is has been. Let's be honest, sensational, how he's been match-made. So I think credit to them. Conor Ben's got the potential to be a superstar. I'm not, not saying that. He really has. He's got all the ingredients. He's, he's good-looking. He speaks five different languages. And he knocks people out. He looks, he looks, he's, he's been looking really good. But the, the, the Avanesian thing, it's like it's painful to listen to. Like, if I was being like a, a devil's advocate, if, if Conor Ben is... Uh... If you think of him as a, as a potential business proposition, yeah, 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 you're trying to build a product. Yeah, sure. You're not going to say that on on TV, or you, if that is not ready for that fight. If, uh, if especially if you're building him to be the next pay per view fighter. Yeah, yeah, no, yes and no, really, because like you can say that. Look, in a few fights, we're ready for that person, and then that's fine, and that's fine. But don't try and like d- dive, dive all. And the Chris Eubank Junior thing is like he's my personal opinion is all the heat they've had for you're not fighting Avanesian is. Okay, we need to do something now. So I'm going to say I'm going to fight Chris Eubank Jr. Chris Eubank Jr. can't make 154 pounds. Never in a million years he'd have to chop off his leg. So it was all kind of smoke and mirrors for me. It's like that. That's just my honest opinion. But do I think Conor Ben could be a potential superstar? Absolutely. But look at the other fighters in the top ten, like Rashidi Ellis. He doesn't get talked about because he was he was piss poorly promoted by Golden Boy. Um, so you've got people like him, the Avanesian fight, which the British public are, scream, are screaming for. And um, listen, whether the winner of Kel Brook, Amir Khan, but can Kel Brook make £147 if he was to beat Amir Khan or Amir Khan vice versa? Do they have the appetite? Like, I kind of want to see Conor Ben fight someone, even if it's not a Jaron Ennis or a 
Rashidi is. Just fight. I want to see you fight someone in their prime. Okay. And uh, moving on from Conor, you, you touched on it there. Amir Khan, Kelbrook, I know you're very excited for this fight. I'm, I'm, I'm comp really, really excited for it. I know some people are trying to like, lie to themselves saying they're not excited for it. I'm, I'm fucking excited for that fight. So what I want to ask you is, who do you want to win and who do you think is going to win? Do, do, I'll be, do you know me? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of known for not sitting on the fence with, with predictions. I genuinely haven't got a fucking clue who's going to win that fight. You seen Amir Khan's picture today? Unbelievable shape. Kel Brook's in unbelievable shape as well. Listen, I think it's great. But one thing I will say about that fight is I don't think it goes past six rounds either way. Okay. Interesting. Um, I think I've asked you pretty much everything I want to ask you, Sam. Is there anything else that you want to tell us um, before I no, wrap up? No, no, no. I, I just wanted to ask you, Sam, um, just slightly off topic, because um, I always like to speak to people outside the boxing world as well. Mm -hmm. You tweet a lot about the, the situation in the Middle East. I think something that is probably personal to you because I've seen him mess talk about in it. Palestine. In Palestine, yeah, because uh, it's. I just think it's, it's it's just piss poorly coveraged. Like mm. people just don't seem to don't seem to. And the Yemen as well. People don't really. You don't hear it on the news. Like what what's happening there. So I like to raise as much awareness as awareness about it as possible. On I've not got a massive platform, but if I can make turn a couple of heads on my platform, then I'll, I'll do it. Well, it's something that's quite personal to me as well, so I, I, that's why I wanted to bring it up today. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I've donated, donated some money as well, as, as much money as I can towards it as well, and I'll continue to do that as well. Okay, so um, it's something I think is worth for boxing fans, even though they might, not, they might switch no, off at this sure, point. for sure, for sure. It's good for them, for them to know. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you so much for your time, Sam. I really no, appreciate, I appreciate it. it. I, pr I appreciate you for coming, coming no, to interview pleasure. little old me. No worries. We'll catch up soon again. Nice one, mate. Thank you.